Today in the news, I ramble a bit about NVIDIA, a new chip for console surfaces, and Nintendo drifts away. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. The RTX 2080 Super has finally been launched and, well, pretty much every reviews are saying the same thing. If you want an RTX card, get the 2070 Super instead. It's a better bang for the buck. It looks like across the board, the card is only around 8% faster than its non-Super variant, which is exactly what we saw on my coverage yesterday. So what is NVIDIA going to do now that this card has been pretty much ragged on by almost everyone? Well, probably nothing. Nvidia still holds the high-end market completely, so they have absolutely no reasons to do anything right now. What I've noticed in the comment section though, is that a lot of you guys are waiting for Big Navi, and if you're looking for a high-end card at a reasonable price, and you can wait, I really think you're doing the right thing. Those new Big Navi cards are bound to be proper high-end cards. I don't think they'll absolutely destroy the 2080 Super or the 2080 Ti, but what is sure is that AMD AMD's solution will cause another shift in the market and that the pricing will definitely push Nvidia to do something about their prices. But I do have to address this, if you think that Nvidia is more like Intel and that all they want to do is keep their prices high because they feel like they're premium, then you're kind of mistaken. There's two reasons why their prices are high. First, their high-end cards are just that, high-end, and without competition from AMD, they are allowed to put whatever value they want on them. Sure, it's not a good reason but that's what happens when you have a monopoly in a segment. The second reason is of course the RTX features. Not just ray tracing, but the whole ecosystem. You might not like it, but Nvidia does something that AMD doesn't, and they're allowed to put a price on it. As we can see from this current RTX lineup, the premium ranges between $50 and $100 for the 2060 Super and 2070 Super. I just know that once AMD catches up and integrates ray tracing into Big Navi, then Nvidia will be forced to respond. I mean, RTX Super is already a response to Navi. It's still more expensive than the RX 5700 series, sure, but Nvidia feels that RTX is worth more money. And even if AMD doesn't include hardware-based ray tracing on big Navi, the price to performance might still cause another Nvidia response. Anyways, I went on a bit of a ramble there, so let's move on to some other news. Moving on, it looks like the Zen 2-based Gonzalo APU isn't the only one destined for consoles. A new SOC codenamed Flute has popped up in user benchmark and some outlets speculate that this one will power the next gen Xbox, Project Scarlet. This Flute APU is very similar to Gonzalo with an 8 core and 16 thread CPU and a base clock of 1.6 GHz with a boost of 3.2. The only main difference is its identifier for the PCIe ID which is 13F9 instead of 13F8. This might be the differentiating factor between between the two consoles if those chips are meant for them. The other curious thing is that if this is the Zen 2 CPUs for consoles, they might not be embracing the full Zen 2 experience like we thought. Looking at the system memory latency, we can see a huge difference between a traditional Zen 2 CPU with 8 cores and these APUs. This indicates that the cache amount has been drastically reduced. Does it matter? Well, those are highly customized chips, so there must be a reason behind it. Next up, we got Nintendo. It seems like the company's Joy-Con controllers might be getting flashbacks to the N64 days. No, I'm not talking about the palm blisters that you would get from playing too much Mario Party, but I am talking about the controller drift. In case you didn't know, several users have gone to Twitter, Reddit, or even Nintendo themselves to complain about the controller registering directional input when it's not being touched. Well, now Nintendo is facing a class action lawsuit for that issue. Nintendo has responded to the actual issue issue, but not to their lawsuit. They said that they are aware of the recent problems, but they aren't really offering any solutions just yet. I don't think Nintendo had a console without controller issues since the SNES, except maybe for the Wii U. The N64 joysticks were hanging on by a thread, the GameCube controllers were drooping like crazy, the Wii controllers had to come with uh, protective covers, although that was more of a user issue, and the Joy-Cons have drift. Hopefully, Nintendo revamped their controller for the Switch light because those are not removable so if you have drift you're stuck with it 
And lastly, in gaming, Overwatch's Hero 31 Sigma is now out and he's, well, a weird character. He's a tank hero with a projected barrier, a defense matrix style projectile sucker, and a weird rock tossing ability. I tried him out and yeah, he's fun, but it's definitely a different kind of fun. I did although really like the reveal. The origin story video was very well done, sent chills down my spine straight up. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. I've got two pretty cool videos coming up. Hopefully they'll be done by this week so you guys will be able to see them. If you got any comments or questions, make sure you drop them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. It'd be greatly appreciated. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, if one of you guys has a, a, a code for Mario Maker 2, uh, just DM me on Twitter. I'd love to, uh, to play the game. Bye.